Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm back with a requested video on following the full GAPS diet while going to school. So I thought this was a really great video topic and there are some good things to know about sticking to something like the GAPS diet while you're going somewhere to school for kids of different ages. So I have some experience with this with my daughter who's in first grade. So with her going this year and then last year going to kindergarten and how we're able to have her stick to GAPS and you know enjoy those benefits while being at school and all those kind of details. So for younger kids like this age group, it is important for the parent to be involved, to have communication with the school and the teacher. And thankfully, a lot of schools are coming, you know, as these things become more common, they're more used to kids having different food needs when it comes to, you know, things that they don't do well with. In the past, things like food allergies were a bit more rare and there would be something more like an anaphylactic peanut allergy that was taken very seriously at schools, but not a whole lot else, but we're seeing things change as kids get sicker and the world gets more toxic. So it's becoming more commonplace and schools are coming to realize that they usually have like paperwork that a parent can fill out so that you can say, my child cannot have red dye number 40 or something like that, for example. Different schools will handle it different ways, but the point is most of them are willing to recognize this. And in my daughter's case, I'm able to bring up to them that it affects focus and attention if she has excess sugar and food dyes. That's kind of how I phrase it. And obviously focus and attention are important for school, so a school should take that seriously. So what we have done is have a substitute treat available. So I'll have something there at school so that if the other students bring something and hand it out that she wouldn't do well with or wasn't on gaps, then she has something. So it'll be usually my flourless cupcakes that fit with gaps or something like that in the freezer. And then she's able to have her treat and still feel good. And that brings me to another point that is really, really helpful, even with the youngest kids is communication with them and getting them involved in the process, talking to them about, do you notice how you feel when you eat this type of food and how you feel much better when you eat this kind of food? So, and they, they get it. They totally get it. My daughter is completely on board. She doesn't want to eat stuff that doesn't make her feel good. So she's happy to have her cupcakes. They look fancy. They taste good. So it's really nice. And it's doesn't have to be about like I'm eating something different from the other kids. It's good to help them focus on they're making smart choices that are doing their body good. It's okay if it's not the same as the way everybody else around them is eating. And chances are, like in, in my daughter's class, there are some other kids who don't eat the junk food that's that's sometimes handed out. So she's not alone either. But even if they are, it's okay. It's about making smarter choices that make you feel better. And it's okay if it's different from what most people are eating. So that's a really important lesson that kids can learn even starting from the youngest ages. So that's a really big tip that I have is getting them involved. And I know that depending on where they're at on gaps, they might not be to that point. And that's where you just have to take a little bit more control and make sure that the teacher's on board with how they need to eat and that kind of thing. But as time goes on, then they start to see the benefits of how much better they feel eating a certain way. And then it'll be easy for them to just be like, yeah, this is the way I choose to eat because I feel better this way. Another really useful thing is knowing lots of different ways to have substitute foods that they're happy with. So on full gaps, you have so many different options. There's fruit, there's baked goods, different kind of things that you can use that seem like fun treats. A lot of these things you can share with the whole class whenever it's their turn to share something and the other kids will enjoy it too. Whether it's fruit cut into fun little bunny shapes or like flowerless cupcakes like I talked about. You know, lots of different options that everybody can enjoy. So having good cookbooks on hand like these, the Heal Your Gut cookbook and Dr. Becky Plotner's cookbook Gap Stage by Stage with Recipes is really, really nice for having lots of different ideas for treat type foods that can be shared with other people or just brought along as their own treat and I'll have links in the description box to those books. I have a bunch of different recipes too and I'm always coming out with more on my website and YouTube channel as well for different GAPS recipes. I like to involve my daughter 
in as much as possible packing her lunches too to send along. I'll ask her how much do you want of these different foods and and she's always really excited to help choose what she's going to bring the next day and how much of different things and that can help ensure that they're into what they're bringing and more likely to eat it. When you have a child who is on gaps or start especially starting gaps this is a really helpful book too from mac and cheese to veggies please it's by Jennifer Scribner who is a nutritional therapy practitioner and a certified gaps practitioner she has really great tips on kids and eating and she has some tips in here too on dealing with the whole school situation or like other family members and different things like that as well so this is one that I really recommend if you have kids on gaps too. And then probably the last thing to keep in mind is to make sure that you're not trying to copy an old way of eating or the standard American diet or how the other kids at school are eating with gaps. You're gonna be overworked and burned out in no time. Having kids on gaps when you're doing it right after a period of time, they will love good nourishing real food and they'll really enjoy it too. Because once the body is more in tune, it loves good real nourishing food and you'll see that in your kids too. Don't be afraid to just send what you know that they need to be eating on gaps and then sprinkle in fun treats here and there. So I hope that you found that helpful. If you have questions, be sure and leave me a comment down below. Be sure and check out that description box for links to free eBooks and other goodies. I have a gaps diet getting started guide. I have a free class on starting the gaps diet with more confidence and less confusion. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.